Hello everyone, welcome to class today. Today we will be talking about vial, needle, and syringe safety. Thank you all for being here today. Let's get started. Safety is always our goal when providing care to our patients. We want to ensure their safety and we also want to ensure our safety. Doing no harm is a basic biblical principle. Doing no harm requires us to not get overwhelmed and learn each step and perform each step of every skill we learn. Let us pray before beginning our lesson today. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here today to learn about this new nursing skill. Help to guide us as we learn to safely care for our patients while also keeping ourselves safe. Thank you for your many blessings. Amen. So just to go over our objectives today and what we're going to be learning, um, they are demonstrate understanding of the safety measures relating to preparing and withdrawing medication from a vial and demonstrate understanding of maintaining aseptic technique and other appropriate infection control measures. This topic is of particular importance to nursing and safety of nursing. Needle stick injury is a non-intentional penetration of skin by needle. Most victims of these needle stick injuries are nurses. There's a higher prevalence in nurses who have not been educated on needle stick injury, and that is why we want to cover this. It is an important skill to learn and to practice. Nobody wants to be stuck by a needle, and you definitely don't want to be stuck by a contaminated needle. So practicing these safe skills is a very important thing for us to do through our nursing education. The link for this video will be in the description of this video. Please watch that now. It is a great video, short video of all the parts of the syringe and needle in the vial. Preparing medication from vials using needles is a skill you will more than likely be using frequently as a nurse, especially if you're working somewhere that's an inpatient setting as a, like a hospital. So these are pictures of everything that you just saw in the video, but I did want to point out the picture of the needles and you can see they're very different needles. There's different ones to choose from. Um, the smallest one all the way to the left with the orange, that's your typical insulin needle. Those are very small and short and those needles you do use on the patient after you draw the medication out of the vial. Uh, a lot of the insulin syringes have that safety glide that you just automatically pop up once you're done giving the injection to the patient. And the other needles you see here, they're different lengths, different gauges, which the gauge is the diameter of the needle part where the medication actually goes through. Uh, today, when I demonstrate for you guys, I'll be using a blunt tip needle, which is not a point at all on it. It's just an open barrel to draw the medication out. So I just wanted to point that out, that there's a lot of different sizes in needles, and usually the bigger the diameter, the easier it is to draw the medication out. There's not really a specific needle you have to use to draw medication out, but the larger that diameter, the bigger the gauge, usually the easier it is to draw medicine out. So let's talk about patient safety. So whenever we're administering medication, we always want to go over the seven rights of medication, which is right medication, right dose, right patient, right time, right route, the right reason, and the right documentation. So those are all things we always want to be aware of when we're administering medication to any patient. When it comes to vial medication, we want to have strict aseptic technique to contribute to patient safety so that we're not exposing them to any contaminants. We want to educate them on the medication that's being administered because more than likely if they're getting medicine out of a vial, this is not a medicine they're used to taking at home other than insulin. That could be something they're used to. But besides insulin, most medicines out of a vial is not something you're going to be receiving at home. So there's a chance that it's a new medicine. So we always want to make sure we're educating them on any medicines that we're giving. And then another safety component for our patients when we're talking about vials and needles is ensuring that we use our sharps disposal, which is where we put 
our needle when we are done using it and also it's where we want to put our vials because many of them are glass so they would also go in our sharps disposal nurse safety is also a big component when we're dealing with needles and vials and syringes like we talked about in the beginning these needle stick injuries nurses are the victims of those because we're the ones that are using the needles and drawing up this medicine and giving it to patients so some guidelines to follow just to try to keep ourselves as safe as possible is not to recap needles after you use the needle on the patient so after you administer the medicine you don't ever want to try to recap it uh, we do recap it before we give it sometimes because that would not be a contaminated needle you could obviously still stick yourself but it wouldn't be a contaminated needle so we always also want to use a needle system when available those are your lower lock systems and those safety glide needles where as soon as you finish with the needle there's a mechanism where you just push and it goes to the tip of the needle and covers it up we always want to use our sharps disposal as soon as possible as soon as we're done with that needle and vial we just need to get it in the sharps disposal it is also important for us to stay up to date on blood board pathogens and attend any education events where we can learn more about these and just stay current and fresh on this information in the event that a needle stick injury does happen it's something that we need to report immediately and follow your specific facility protocol every facility will have a protocol on what to do if you get stuck with a needle especially a contaminated needle let's go over aseptic technique so the number one part of aseptic technique is proper hand hygiene we're going to wash our hands and make sure we start with fresh hands before we deal with any medication of any patient needles and syringes are for one patient one time only we don't reuse any needles or syringes ever and it is definitely only for one patient we are going to disinfect that rubber seal with alcohol as the video said we want to rub it for 30 seconds and let it air dry before we draw the medication out there are single use vials that is used for one patient and you discard it immediately after you use it so as soon as you draw the medicine you need out of it then you need to get it in the sharps disposal and get rid of it that's one patient one dose even if there is medication left in that vial you still need to get rid of it in that sharps container it will not be reused they are single use vials and then we have multi-use vials and the main vials for that will be your insulin vials they are kept in a central location they should not go into patient rooms because they are used for different patients um, as soon as they get opened you date them and depending on what it is you dispose of it accordingly so you always want to date it when you open it because every medication once it's open has a certain number of days before you get rid of it once the seal on it has been broken i'm going to go over each step for drawing up medication out of a vial so the first thing you're going to do is select the appropriate needle and attach that to the syringe then you're going to open the vial now if the vial has a plastic cap on it and has not been opened before you are not required to rub it with alcohol for 30 seconds i always do because it's just good practice to get into because if the plastic cap was already removed, like for a multi-use vial, then you would scrub it for 30 seconds and let it air dry. So I just think it's a good habit to just always do it no matter what. So after you've opened the vial and cleaned the rubber seal on it, you're gonna position it flat on your work surface. It could be a table in a bedroom, or sometimes we use our computer on wheels. That's a good work surface for preparing medication as well. Our hands have been washed. We're gonna put our gloves on. We're gonna move the plunger back to the volume that we're gonna be drawing out of that vial. And we're gonna insert that air into the vial into the airspace of the vial.
So at this point, you've inserted that air into the vial. You're going to turn the vial upside down with the top facing down. You're going to keep a firm grip on that syringe and on the vial. And your non-dominant hand will be holding the vial while your dominant hand is holding the syringe. So then you're going to pull on that plunger to get the correct volume into that syringe and move the needle up into that free air space. You're going to flip the vial back over at this point and move that needle up into the air space. Then you're going to remove the needle very carefully out of your vial. So at this point, you're going to want to hold it upright with the needle pointing up. And if there's air bubbles, that's when you kind of want to tap on it and free those and make sure that there are no air bubbles. So at this point, you're going to recap that needle. And the best way to do that is you've got your flat, flat workspace here in front of you. The cap you took off the needle with just one hand and not holding the cap you need to kind of wiggle that needle back into the cap and then once the cap is on there pick the needle up and you can click the cap into place twist it off get rid of that put it into the sharps container okay I've got all my supplies here to drop some medication out of a vial I've got my vial here some good old blue colored h2o my medicine I've got my syringe, it's a 5cc syringe here. And then my needles, actually they did not come prepackaged, unfortunately. These are blunt tip needles. So we definitely would not want to touch any area of the needle because then it would be contaminated. So that's why it's important to take it directly out of the package and not let it touch anything once you have it on your syringe. So this was not prepackaged, so it's not really entirely accurate. So I've already washed my hands. And I'm going to be, I'm going to pop off the top of this file as my first step. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop that plastic cap off. And there's my rubber. There's always like a little round bullseye on the vials to tell you like where to insert. So I'm going to do this for 30 seconds to clean the top of the vial really well. And then while it is drying, air drying, that's when I'm going to be preparing my needle and syringe. Okay. So 30 seconds. And then we're going to let that air dry. And now I'm selecting the appropriate needle. And I'm going to hook it to my syringe. So I'm going to be drawing two cc's or milliliters up of this blue H2O medication. So I'm going to pull back my plunger here to get two cc's of air. Okay, two cc's of air. And I'm going to insert that into the vial into the air space, not down into the liquid, but just into this upper air space of the vial before you see the blue. That's the air. Okay, so now I've done that. I've injected that. So now I'm going to go ahead and insert the needle down into the liquid and flip up, okay? And you'll notice this vacuum pressure once you've inserted some the air, and you want to keep the bevel of that needle into the liquid, okay? So once you've inserted air into the vial, you're automatically going to get a push back, okay? Usually it's the exact amount of air that you pushed is the idea behind that, okay? So now I've got my two cc's drawn up all right and i'm going to flip this back over and here's my two cc's i don't have any air bubbles so i'm good to go there and i'm going to remove the needle which now if i had a cap i would lay the cap on my surface here and just use my one hand to guide that cap back on and then go ahead and click it on all the way once the cap is covering the needle but I don't have a cap for this and it's a blunt tip but I'm going to go ahead and take it off so now we have our syringe ready you don't want to touch any of this it can contaminate and therefore give something to the patient so that is your demonstration of how to draw medication out of a vial This is a really handy tool to help your colleagues, your peers, your other friends that are on clinical with you if y'all are doing 
medication from files. This one is an injection safety checklist. And this is a great tool to use. It's put out from the CDC just to ensure that you are in fact drawing up medication in a safe way to keep yourself safe and the patient safe while this is happening. So this is a great tool to have and for you to read over. And we are gonna have a little quiz at the end of this. And a lot of the information on the quiz can be found from this safety checklist. So let's familiarize ourselves with this and understand the information that's on this. If y'all have any questions, I am happy to take them.